We have a lot of news to cover in today's video. We have some more signings. We have some trade rumors, lots of news in the waiver wire. And unfortunately, COVID-19 has hit the NHL. We'll get into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a lot of news to cover, all kinds of news items and some rumors, signings, etc. It's going to be one of those videos you're going to want to listen close and follow all the way through because there's a lot of information here in today's video. So first up, let's get started with some of the signings. We got Sammy Votnin has re-signed with the New Jersey Devils on a one-year, $2 million contract. Of course, a UFA defenseman played with the Devils previously. Of course, he was traded uh, from New Jersey to Carolina. Ended up being injured a lot. Uh, never really played with the Canes a whole lot. Did play with them in the return in the bubble in the 2020 playoffs. And has been out there for a long time. He's a pretty decent defenseman. I'm surprised it took him so long to find himself a new home, a new contract. Probably one of the case of one of those players trying to hopefully hold out and get the best deal possible. But back to New Jersey he goes uh, where they could certainly use him. And uh, we'll see how he does for the upcoming year. Now Riley Shahan, who had gone to Sabres camp on a tryout, has now confirmed a one-year contract as well. Uh, so that's a league minimum contract for Riley Shannon in Buffalo. Uh, not a huge surprise there. Uh, I figured he would end up getting signed. Uh, he can provide them with some bottom six depth on the center position. Uh, so obviously that's a, a pretty decent fit there in my opinion. Uh, speaking of PTOs, another player who was on one has not had such a good outcome. Scott Darling of the Florida Panthers uh, is now going to be released from his PTO and uh, will no longer be uh, eligible to be signed by the Florida Panthers organization. Of course, we know he uh, was with the Blackhawks before, got an opportunity uh, to go to Carolina on a pretty good lucrative contract. Of course, we know how things went. Things went terribly wrong. Uh, had a really bad year. Ended up getting bought out. Uh, played last year over in Europe, trying to make a comeback to the NHL. And uh, obviously, it's not going to be with Florida if it's going to happen, but there might be another opportunity for uh, him and another team. And we'll get into that next, which is unfortunately... Uh, we have news that Corey Crawford, a newly signed goaltender with New Jersey, of course, longtime goalie for the Blackhawks, who signed with the Devils in the offseason, is taking an indefinite leave of absence from the team. We don't know why. Of course, this is due to personal reasons. Uh, so there's not, really not a lot of point in speculating because, like I said, we have no idea what it is. It's clearly personal. Um, it's unfortunate. I hope it's not concussion-related because we know what kind of concussion issues he's battled before, but he's been off the ice and uh, missing from camp in the uh, skating sessions for the past four days. Uh, and then the Devils made that announcement today. So we really have no idea when he'll be back or what's going on, but they could certainly use uh, another, you know, goaltender in their organization. So maybe Darling gets a chance there. I know they also have Scott Wedgwood, who's, uh, you know, a fairly um, experienced AHL goaltender in the system. I'm not sure what they're going to want to do for, a backup goalie, they need somebody to be the number three guy in the taxi squad. They'll need somebody to play at their AHL affiliate too. So we'll see how that goes, but there certainly could be an opportunity for a guy like Darling or another goaltender still looking for a contract to pick things up in New Jersey because I'm sure they're going to want some insurance, not knowing how long Crawford is going to be. Now, of course, as I mentioned as well, we have some other news to jump into. Not a huge surprise here by any means, but the Boston Bruins have officially named Patrice Bergeron their new captain. Obviously, that's, like I said, the worst kept secret in hockey was that Patrice Bergeron would be getting to see after we found out that Zdeno Chara had left and signed with the Washington Capitals. It's going to look different seeing Big Z in Washington, but obviously uh, Bergeron's been a great leader for the Bruins for a long time, been an alternate captain, a terrific player, terrific person, and not a huge shocker at all. He'll make a terrific captain and likely carry that C till the end of his career. So, like I said, no big surprise in that news. Obviously, as I mentioned, we have a lot of players on waivers here today. Uh, actually, several. The list is quite long, most of which are players who we expect it to probably play in the American Hockey League. So not a huge surprise, but there's a couple names that just draw a little bit of, uh, of more interest here. And I'll put the list up on the screen for you to have a quick look at. But the notable names we're looking at are David Backus and Anaheim. We had heard before but from GM Bob Murray that Backus was a player who they intended to have on the NHL roster and actually play and have a regular role. He wasn't going to be a buyout candidate or anything, but this is certainly a situation. I'm not sure if it's more directed to how he's played so far in camp or it's certainly uh, affected by their cap situation. We can say that as well. And they also have defenseman Christian Juice uh, on the waivers as well. So those two players uh, clear, which I assume they will, 
can certainly have their contracts buried in the AHL. They'll likely be part of the taxi squad. And when you take that out of the equation, as well as the Ryan Kessler contract going on long-term injury reserve again, uh, that'll kind of free up enough space that they'll kind of level out and be cap compliant, and they can kind of maximize their cap space by making those moves. So as much as those moves are about play, it's also about cap very much so. Now, some other names on the waiver wire today include Anthony Stolarz, who just signed a contract with the Ducks as a free agent goaltender. Of course, he was already with the organization, but it was a, a pending UFA. Uh, obviously, Stolarz is going to need waivers to go play with their minor league team. We knew that he wasn't going to be the number one or number two goaltender, so not a huge surprise there. You got Nick Batan of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, not a huge surprise, but certainly a player that might interest some other clubs. Uh, so Batan's on the waiver wire. And Jeremy Bracco is another name that uh, certainly would be familiar, especially to Maple Leaf fans, now part of the Hurricanes organization, also on waivers. Another you know young player who might garner some interest. But overall, you have eight players from the Colorado Avalanche, eight players from the Anaheim Ducks, and seven players from the Hurricanes, along with Patan from the Leafs. So certainly a, a big group of guys on the waiver wire today, but teams are not wasting any time in order to get their players through the waiver wire so they can decide if they're going to the taxi squad or on the AHL team or, or wherever they're going to be. Obviously not part of the NHL roster to at least start the upcoming 2021 NHL season. Now, as I mentioned as well, unfortunately, COVID-19 has hit the NHL. We got word earlier today that the Dallas Stars had to cancel practice. The same thing, I believe, is happening in Columbus. We don't have any further information on the Columbus situation, but the NHL has put out a statement in regards to the Dallas Stars. Now, as you probably will recall, part of the protocols going through camp is that the NHL will be putting out the information in the statements if anything COVID-related needs to be announced. It won't be the teams directly doing it, but they did confirm that six Dallas Stars players and two staff members have tested positive for the virus, which is certainly... Not a good sign. I assume that most of the other players and staff members, pretty much everybody in the organization, would be close contacts and would likely now have to isolate. So that's going to certainly cause issues. They're not going to be able to really finish their training camp. Uh, they're not going to be able to play their first game on time. At this point, it looks as though the earliest the Dallas Stars would play likely would be about January the 19th is what we're hearing uh, based on the isolation and quarantining rules about the players who are positive and those who are close contacts and need to isolate now. So that's a really unfortunate situation. The NHL is uh, reviewing and likely going to have to revamp their schedule uh, and obviously push things back and move things around. But that's part of the reason why the NHL and the Players Association agreed on a 56-game schedule. They didn't want to go too long, so they had a little bit of wiggle room. In case these things happen, they had some time to be able to reschedule games uh, so that they still had a good opportunity for all teams to get all of their full game schedule played and not have to cancel and have an, you know, an odd number of games played per team in their division. So, unfortunate situation. We'll have to wait for further news here. I'm not sure what's going on with the Columbus situation, but their practice was canceled. Uh, all I know is the uh, coaching staff was informed that the, uh, the players were not available to practice today. The coaching staff appears to be in the clear in that case. So, I'm not sure we're really going to find out a whole lot more on that, but... We'll have to stay tuned and see if uh, they end up in isolation or anything further there. But some unfortunate news. This is bound to happen here a little bit as we go through training camps. But you would think with all the quarantining rules um, that were required heading into camp that this could have been avoided. But I guess we'll see. I mean, we're not going to get a lot more personal data than that. But hopefully everybody in Dallas is okay. Everybody recovers. And they can get back to playing hockey here ASAP. Now, a few updates and trade rumors around the NHL. First up, I want to take a look at the Maple Leafs and goaltender Frederick Anderson. Now, I don't have any information to suggest he's going to be traded, but at this point, it looks as though contract negotiations on an extension have not yet begun, and it looks as though they likely won't for some time. They could talk a little bit throughout the season, but it's certainly very much a wait-and-see approach here. I think the Leafs are very anxious to see how he plays. Obviously, as we know and we reported and talked about during the Maple Leaf season preview video from yesterday, uh, the Leafs certainly engaged in uh, trade talks around the goaltender uh, throughout the offseason. They were trying to consider an upgrade as well as a you know cost certainty situation as well. We know Freddie Anderson's entering the final year of his deal. We know that he's likely going to want more money. The Leafs are certainly tied up against it with a very flat salary cap situation, and that's going to prove difficult to re-sign him. Uh, regardless of what he wants for money. So they were trying to see if they could find a longer-term solution to maybe somebody a little younger, a little cheaper, but at the same time be at least as good or an upgrade, and they failed to find that. So they did not act on that, and they did not make any moves. They'll ride the season out with Freddie and see where things go. 
But at this point, if the Leafs stumble, for example, which I don't expect them to do, I expect the Maple Leafs to have a very good year. But if things go horribly wrong for some weird reason uh, and he gets off to a bad start, then I would think at that point that it's quite likely we could still see a possible trade. But for right now, we'll have to wait and see if they do engage in the extension talks throughout the season or how things go. But one thing is for certain, his future in Toronto beyond the current season is certainly still up in the air. Now, taking a look at the New York Islanders, we know that they still need to sign top RFA Matthew Barzell, who's looking for a mega deal, but we know he's not going to get that long-term big money contract. It's just not possible given the economic and cap situation for the New York Islanders. The latest reports we've heard, though, are that they likely are going to settle on a bridge deal two to three years, but the Islanders are in the process of trying to create some cap space to see if they can afford to pay him a little bit more money. Most people that I'm getting information from and the sources that I'm kind of reading upon here are indicating that they don't really feel Barzell's going to miss any game action, even though he's not in camp. Uh, you know, a lot of players were having informal skates and workouts, etc., and that even if he's a very late addition to camp, that he still would likely be in the lineup uh, for the first game. Uh, and it's still a situation that they're still, like, basically, they're trying to move some money to be able to pay him a little bit more. But obviously, they have the Johnny Boychak contract that can go long-term injury reserve, but they do have contracts they want to get registered for Matt Martin, Andy Green, and Corey Schneider. They're trying to make some room here. Uh, they have a little over, you know, they have three point nine million dollars in cap space plus the boy check money that can go long-term injury so they they have room to probably be close to getting that done but they'd really like to move defenseman thomas hickey who has a two and a half million dollar contract and they'd also like to move leo komarov one of those two players is who uh, lamarillo is shopping right now but of course as we know neither one of them probably going to generate a ton of interest so i'm not sure if they can add a sweetener to that and uh, they do have some interesting prospects or picks that could be included to another team. We're probably looking at a team like the LA Kings or the Detroit Red Wings mostly at this point who could take on a player like that and uh, maybe get something uh, you know, additional for doing so uh, and helping them out because they do have the space and they do have the potential roster moves where they could take on another veteran. They both made it clear that they'd be open to those kind of discussions. So I guess we will see. But as the Islanders continue to negotiate with Barcel, they are trying to free up some money and those are the players they're trying to move to see if they can up the ante here and uh, get uh, a little bit more money in Barzell's contract so they can get him signed and get him back on the ice. Now, of course, the latest edition here of NHL Insider Trading had a big focus on Columbus Blue Jackets center iceman Pierre-Luc Dubois, where Darren Dricker and Pierre Lebrun both talked about the, uh, the likelihood here that he could actually be moved sooner than later. Darren Dricker went on to say that even though Dubois has uh, pledged and promised to be a good teammate and not try not to be a distraction, that many feel that it's best for both sides if they get a deal done sooner than later. Now, it doesn't mean a deal is imminent. Could it be weeks? Could it be months? Could it drag on to next year at the NHL draft? Any of those scenarios are certainly possible because the likelihood here that a lot of teams are going to be very interested in a guy like Dubois is obviously very, very high. Now, Pierre Lebrun in his latest article for The Athletic has mentioned seven teams he feel would be a good fit. Uh, for Dubois, uh, including the talks here that the Anaheim Ducks were pushing quite hard uh, for a Dubois trade. Now, of course, they have some interesting young assets who they could part with. Dubois could end up kind of being the heir apparent to Ryan Getzlav out there. So the Ducks are very, very interested. They have some great young assets like Sam Steele, Comtois, Jones, Lunderstrom, uh, you know, Perot. They, they obviously would have to put together a package of players to entice Columbus, and then I believe that Columbus is going to be looking for a pretty hefty price tag. I know one of the teams that LeBron mentioned was Montreal, and he wondered if it might take a package of both Suzuki and Kakaniemi to get the deal done. And to be honest, that is pretty steep. I mean, if I'm Montreal, I'm interested in Dubois. I'm not giving up my top two young centers for that. I mean, one of them, maybe, but certainly not both. But Anyways, obviously Columbus is going to be shooting for the moon here. Dubois is a top young talent on the rise, only going to get better. And, you know, I don't, uh, does not surprise me at all that the price tag is going to be enormous. It doesn't mean they're going to get that asking price. But, like I said, with so many teams being interested, and they're saying as many as like 20 or more teams will be having, a, you know, at least kicking tires with the Jackets, uh, having preliminary talks and kind of seeing what the price is going to be to see what they can do because not often a player like this comes on the trade market. So you know there's going to be tons of interest, but for right now, uh, I think from what we're hearing, besides a team like the Winnipeg Jets who's been in the uh, the rumor mill connected to this player and this team, uh, as far as line A goes as well, for some fair favorite of time, I think it's quite possible here that the Ducks right now could be the team making the biggest push. Doesn't mean they're going to get a deal done, 
But I can understand the interest. They have the pieces, and we'll see what they can put together to entice Columbus. But Dubois very well could be traded sooner than later to remove the distraction. And like I said, many feel it's best for him and the team both if they just get this done and move on from this situation. So let me know your thoughts and everything here today down in the comments, and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.